Welcome to the Veterinary Dental Show. This is the second episode, and I'm Brett Beckman. I'm a board-certified veterinary dentist. And I want to announce again our giveaway that we're going to have on the fourth episode. Uh, we've got a set of three Luxator elevators that are winged and short-handled that we're going to give away to three of our viewers. And the way to sign up for that, if you haven't already done so, is just go to veterinarydentistry.net slash podcast. That's veterinarydentistry.net, not dot com, but dot net slash podcast. And you'll be able to enter uh, to win by subscribing on iTunes and also uh, get some extra points by subscribing to our YouTube channel. So every episode, we are going to give you actionable or some takeaways in veterinary dentistry for the veterinarian and the technician team. And in doing so, we hope to elevate the level and standard of care in general practice. So let's get started with this episode. What we're going to talk about is how to approach clients, and we're going to talk about the uh, uh, 80-20 principle. So from a client education standpoint, the main thing that we deal with in veterinary dentistry and general practice is periodontal disease. In cats, it's periodontal disease and tooth resorption. So when we talk to clients, the best way to relay what we are trying to get across, especially in a first visit with a client that's not really familiar with either of those entities in either species, we want to use images in order to do that. And I have four images that I use classically for talking to owners that don't really have any idea about periodontal disease. And it shows initially a patient that the, uh, Try to remember here. So it's the it's the um, premolar uh, fourth premolar that looks pretty normal from a gingival standpoint. There's no changes, no recession. But then the next image is the X-ray with a big hole in the bone and the big dark space in the bone that indicates severe periodontal disease and bone loss. Then the third image is an image of the uh, actual area with all the granulation tissue in that defect. And then the fourth is after that's been cleaned out just to, for demonstration purposes, so show how severe that bone loss is before we extracted that tooth. So you can use images similar to that for for exactly for that. And with that, we have to keep in mind one thing that, pervases a lot of different entities, businesses, uh, veterinary practices, and that's the 80-20 principle or the Pareto principle. And in in contemplating how that affects our practice and how it affects our dentistry in particular, we have to also keep in mind that most of our patients have some type of, of dental disease that needs treating. So with that, it this comes up more frequently in the exam room than any other entity. And what I mean by that is that 80% of the revenue that the practice derives is from 20% of the pet parents. And these are the pet parents that really care and can afford to pay for a high quality service like the dentistry that we are describing when we're describing that standard of care with full mouth radiographs and surgical extractions and closure with everything cleaned up prior to the closure. So that 80-20 principle, also, if you look at it from the standpoint of the 80% of clients, we can still help them. Uh, We may not be able to spend the time to do surgical extractions and clean as good as we normally would. But if we get a dog that comes in with severe periodontal disease and the owners are having a a dental evaluation, then during that evaluation, we will notice mobile teeth. And 
with that, if the teeth are mobile, with that 80%, um, they can't do anything else but extract. They, they, they probably uh, couldn't do one or two teeth for what we should be charging for surgical extraction. So we can help them by removing those teeth uh, fairly quickly and doing it uh, with, with some cleanup with your diamond football burr. But uh, we we just can't spend a couple of hours doing that for what many of our patient or our uh, pet parents unfortunately can't afford. But the A clients, your best clients, are the ones that are in that twenty percent, and that's what we teach. That's the dentistry we teach, and that's the dentistry we should all be practicing according to AHA guidelines and according to uh, all the veterinary dentists and all the top practices in the world that are practicing at that level. So it's important also to remember that when we're interjecting that client education into the exam room with those examples that I just mentioned with the images, we have to expect that when we talk about dentistry at that high level, it's a high-end service and it's going to be fairly expensive. And 80% that 80% is going to say no. So that is unfortunately kind of difficult to take at times, especially if you don't know that that's supposed to happen. And as long as the staff knows, as long as the doctors are aware that 80% of your clients are going to say no right off the bat to that high-end service, then it's easier to take that rejection. Nobody likes rejection. And if we know it's coming eight out of 10 times, then if we get that two out of 10, we're, we're happy. So we help those two patients. We might help a fraction of those other uh, 80% because most of those will never be on the dentistry table to begin with. <clears throat> but we, we want to concentrate on those A clients. And if we don't, those A clients now are very frequently going on the internet or talking to their um, friends and family and they're finding out because this has gotten to the point where we're really making a change in the dentistry world that they're going to go somewhere else. You may not know it, but they may go somewhere else to get a second opinion on dentistry if you're not uh, approaching dentistry from a good client education standpoint and letting them know the value that you're providing by by using images and, and talking to them in detail about what you do step by step in the procedure from full mouth radiographs uh, all the way down to the light anesthesia uh, because of the nerve blocks. And we'll go into that uh, at another time, maybe in the next episode on how to do that. But this has been uh, the second episode of the Vet Dental Show. And again, if you would, please subscribe to us on iTunes. You can go to veterinarydentistry.net slash podcast and do so. And I'll see you on the next episode. Take care.